Hey guys, this is Nick from Income Digs with another tutorial on QuickBooks Online and we're following up again on tracking rehab expenses in your accounting system. Okay, so whether you manage rental properties or you're flipping a house and we want to make sure that our accounting is done right. Okay, so if you haven't seen uh, videos one and two, I recommend you do that first. But if you don't care about that and you're just more interested in this one, that's fine too. Hang out with me and let's um, get after it. This video, I want to show you how we can use the products and services like we were doing in the other two to automatically route our expenses to the appropriate asset account for depreciation. Okay, so now there's so many different ways to do this. This is just like an additional way to do it. What you saw me do in the last video was I was tracking my uh, expenses as expenses, hitting my P&L, and then at the end of the year, I took them out of there and put them onto the basis of the property. That's one way to do it. But a lot of people don't like to see the expenses hit their P&L, because in theory, you know, it's not really a loss you're adding to the value of your property. So I'm gonna show you another way to do it today. Let's get into it. Let me show you, let's get our balance sheet up. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my balance sheet. And you know what, it's tax time, I'm prepping for taxes. So I'm gonna do, last year, I'm gonna do a cash, because you have to do that for taxes. And I'm gonna save this, okay? So if you're not saving reports in QuickBooks, I recommend you do it, you're gonna save a ton of time. All right, so go save customization. We're gonna call this balance sheet 2018. I'm gonna put cash in parentheses, okay? Add this report to a group. All right, let's add a new group and let's call it um, 2018 tax prep. All right, share, I don't really want to right now. Save it, okay, there it's, it's saved for me, okay? So you can see what I have here is my building and then my basis right here for the CapEx, all right? If I pop into that, I made one journal entry at the end of the year to move those expenses from expenses to the basis of my property. So that worked out just fine. All right, now there is also a way to do that kind of automatically, all right? And I'm gonna show you how to do that today. All right, as I ignore that phone call, sorry. Um, so let's get into that. Now it all comes from the products and services. Let's go one real quick as a reminder I wanna show you my, my P&L for last year is zero, all right? And what happened there is my direct construction costs, I was adding them up, adding them up, adding them up throughout the year, and then at the end, I made that journal entry to take them out, right? Which is a fine way to do it. I'm gonna show you how we can do this automatically. We can put them in there. Now, I wanna bring up something else, depreciation, okay? So right now, we have one account in our assets for our capital improvements, and everything's going there. Okay, and that's an okay way to do it for now, but ultimately your accountant is almost definitely going to set separate depreciation schedules for your renovations. Okay, looking at uh, the IRS guidance on this, there's different classifications of the improvements, five year, seven year, 15, or um, you know the property, if you're adding to the structure of the property, then it just counts as kind of the property itself. So you might wanna split up your assets into these. Hang out with me for this video. I'm going to give you a cheat sheet that has this on it as well as just kind of an overview of what I went through today with, with how this works. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to set up different accounts for those various um, depreciation schedules. And for now, I'm just going to do one. All right, I'm just going to do this five-year one. So let's go to our chart of accounts. All right, and you'll see under 123 Main Street, I got my building. Then I got CapEx. I would like to adjust this, okay? I would like to make one more um, kind of super account, all right? So I'm gonna do new, and this is gonna be fixed asset, building. Sub account is 123 Main Street. Okay. And I'm just gonna click save and close. And I should change the name of that, but um, yep, so let's change the name of that. So let's do 123 Main Street, all CapEx, okay? Everything's gonna fall into that. All right, now I'm gonna take my, this right here, this CapEx basis, and I'm gonna make, or this capital improvement, I'm gonna make this a sub-account, okay? Of all CapEx. Okay, so now what do I have? All right, so I got all my CapEx here, then I have this one, I'm gonna call this one, uh, general, I'm going to call this like structural improvements, okay? 
All right, so structural, and then let's change this one. So I'm just going one step deeper here, and we'll call this structural depreciation. Now, here's the thing. We're going to go to this detail, but you can look at your balance sheet. You don't have to look at all these at once. You can kind of um, expand or collapse them as you want. All right, so now I have structural ready to go. All right, I'm going to add one more for five year. All right, so go new. All right, we'll call it buildings again. Other, uh, let's go fixed asset. Let's go buildings, and then we'll go one, two, three, Main Street. Um, five year improvements. Okay, so why am I calling it five years? Because it's going to be depreciated on a five year schedule. All right, it's a sub account of one, two, three, Main Street, all capex, and we do want to track depreciation, save and close. All right, so here's my one, two, three, Main Street five year, and then I got to rename these. We'll just call this one, two, three, Main five year depreciation. All right, and then we'll do uh, one, two, three, Main Street five year basis. All right, so it's kind of annoying to set up, but you only have to do this once, then you're good to go. So here's the idea. We're going to put stuff in these and your accountant's going to know exactly where, uh, you know, where you kind of spent your money. All right. So how do we set that up back to our products and services? Okay. So if I go to my products and services, see, I have demolition and rough electric. Now those in theory during a remodel project, I would guess that those would go toward your uh, general structure. Now, here's the thing. Don't quote me on it. I'm not a CPA. Ask your CPA that exact question, okay? But here's the deal, you can take this and instead of it going to an expense account, we can now move it to one, two, three Main Street structural improvement basis, all right? And also update this account in historical transactions, right? If I click save and close there, there's one. And now if I go to um, Rough Electric as well, oops, I just did Rough Electric, so let's do demo. one, two, three Main Street structural basis and also update historical transactions, save and close. All right, now let's go to my balance sheet. Balance sheet's gonna be out of whack for a second because I have a journal entry in there that I didn't need, all right? I'm gonna go to my saved report and uh, you see that my structural basis is too high. That's because I have this journal entry that I'm going to delete. All right now, every time I spent this money, these transactions, they went directly to my structural basis. I didn't need to make that year end journal entry and they never show up in my, um, they'll never show up in my p &L, okay? And we can still do our reporting by what we spent the money on, okay? Let's make a product or service for something that's not in that structural basis, right? So let's go back to products and services. And so this is me fixing it, right? I changed it and I fixed it. Let's just pretend that we set this up from the get-go. We have a product or service. One, one um, rehab category that is almost definitely going to be a depreciated at a five-year or, or even less, it might just be expensed, is appliances. Almost definitely, okay? Again, don't quote me on it, ask your accountant. All right, so let's go to um, right here, the expense account, let's do one, two, three, Main Street, five-year basis. All right, save and close. So now let's go back to my report. Right now, you don't even see um, you don't even see the five year on here because it's zero. Okay, but let's say that I had a transaction and expense earlier in the year in 2018. Okay, again, we're going to be entering it here product or service appliances, and I'm going to say new refrigerator. All right, and then let's say I also got a new new range on the same day. Okay, so if I click save and close there, 
automatically now my balance sheet shows that five year basis at 1400 okay so this is a cool way now you might be thinking oh man my balance sheet is going to get so big and annoying okay but let's use the arrows to collapse things and you can see that we can make it look nice and neat we can still bring up all capex as one all building as one all land as one there's my total main street i can even take all of this and, and bring it up. So you can have each property here in your total value. I would rather be more specific than not. Your accountant's gonna be grateful for this and you're gonna feel a lot better about knowing what the heck's going on. Okay, next video, we're gonna do depreciation. Okay, I swear, this is the time we're gonna do it. We're gonna take the end of the year, your accountant's gonna do the depreciation. I'm not gonna say that you should. You could, probably you can guess at it, but your accountant's gonna do it and they're gonna hand you the the, depreciation entries, and then you're just going to enter them in your books. Your books will match your accountants perfectly. So that next year, everything's in sync. Okay, so that's going to be on the next one. Um, as I mentioned, I'm going to give you the cheat sheet uh, that shows you the IRS breakdown of the five year, the seven year and all of that, as well as just a little guidance on how to set up your products and services to the appropriate account so that they land in the right place. All right. One thing you, you might be thinking is, Okay, how do I deal with it with multiple properties? We're going to talk about that as well. I know right now we've only had one, two, three Main Street. I'm going to show you how we we'll do it for multiple properties later. All right. But for now, let me know if you have questions on this. It's a little bit more complicated. Uh, put a comment in right on the video and I'll reply directly to it. And um, let me know what else you want to learn. I have the next video is kind of ready. It's going to be on depreciation, but anything else on this topic We'll keep going with it. We'll add as many parts as we need. All right. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you guys soon.